body count voice. So I just started another video where I, I had this idea to kind of make a series of videos talking about tropes I really enjoy in books. And so I'm doing a Beauty and the Beast one where I talked uh, about I'm basically reading some Beauty and the Beast books, but in this video, I just wanted to talk about some books with this trope I really like and games and stuff because I don't really have any books on the back burner like that have to do with this trope. So I just was going to kind of discuss it so that we can have an idea of what this video series is going to be. And then the, in the Beauty and the Beast one, I'm going to actually be reading books as well. So hope that sounds fun trying to think of cool creative things to do for the channel with my 20 subscribers but you know it's fun for me too so anyway we're here today because Claire likes demons in books uh I'm fine thanks for asking but I was wanting to talk about my love for demons in books because I feel like it's kind of not a common thing because my love for demons and books is kind of specific. It's more like I don't really enjoy demons as in like horror books or like I'm trying to think or like supernatural demons where like or even like like the show Supernatural or like in the show Lucifer there's demons but like Demons just kind of end up like wandering around. I don't really care about. I don't. I don't know if this makes sense, but I'm gonna try to explain it the best I can. There's only certain tropes that I enjoy when it comes to demons, and that's basically the trope is basically like a human character is becoming a demon, or a demon character is becoming human, and that's basically what I love to read or see in or anything like that. I don't like it when it's like demon, like if it's just a human being possessed by a demon, like in Supernatural that happens all the time, or like just like a demon character who's a demon and is always gonna be a demon, like Maze and Lucifer. Well, I've, I haven't seen all of Lucifer, so I don't know where Maze goes exactly, her character, but anyway. <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about some books with that trope. Uh, and it's, I spoil all of these books, so if you don't want spoilers for them, I'll flash the cover. Oh, sorry, I also, I was Klaus Hargreaves for Halloween, so if you see the remnants of Hello Goodbye on my hands, that's what that is. Uh, I sharpied it on, so that's what this is. Anyway, so I spoil all these books. I'll flash the cover and give a synopsis, and if you don't want to be spoiled, either skip it when the I'm, I'm done holding the book, or just get spoiled. Anyway, so first on the stack is The Demon's Lexicon by Sarah Reese Brennan. I've talked about this series before. I actually haven't read the entire trilogy. I've only read the first two books, but I've read the first two books twice. So, and I just have never read the third one because I started and it's not as interesting to me. But I have to finish the trilogy because the first two books in the series are some of my favorites ever. So the synopsis is, it's basically about these two brothers, Nick and Alan, and there's demons and magicians in this world, and Nick and Alan are just basically involved. And these other two characters, siblings, May and Jamie, uh, Jamie's been marked by a demon. So the two of them come to Nick and Alan to try and like help him get unmarked by a demon because when you get marked by a demon, you can die. So that's kind of where the story starts, and then that's where the first book goes, and then the second book is just continuing the story. And so here's where I get into spoil spoiler territory, because we spend the whole book, this whole first book, from Nick's perspective. And the whole book, Nick is very, like, he's not like other people. I was about to say he's not like other girls. <laughs> but he's, like, you're in his head, and you can see that he's, like, just kind of unnatural, like weird stuff happens to him. He's always angry and kind of unemotional, emotionless. And Alan is always like, mm, you should like hang hang out and love people. And Nick's like, I fucking hate people. Like, fuck that. And so we discover at the end of the book that Nick is actually a demon. 
and that Alan has been raising him as a human brother, basically. And I just, it is my shit. Like, this book, like, I remember listening to this audiobook, and we got to the twist, and I was like, it's one of those things, like, you know when you're reading a book, and you wish for something to happen. Like, you're like, oh, I wish this chick was a lesbian. But then, like, she's never a lesbian because people are stupid. That was kind of what this was. I was like, oh, God. Like, when we were building up to the twist, I was like, I hope, I hope to God. Nick is a demon. And I bet he won't be because, like, I never get what I want. And then he was. It was glorious. I was so excited. I loved, I loved it. I just think I love the idea of like a demon becoming human and like loving <sighs> like Nick's relationship with Alan kills me. It's so good. So yeah, that's this highly recommend. I know I just spoiled it for you, but I did tell you I was going to spoil it. So anyway, there's that. So, the next group of books I have here uh, is the Shadow of the Fox trilogy by Julie Kagawa, which has uh, Shadow of the Fox, has Soul of the Sword, and has Night of the Dragon. So, these books, basically, we follow a girl named Yumeko and a boy named Tamaki, right? Wasn't his name Tamaki? Tatsumi. We follow a girl named Yumeko and a boy named Tatsumi. And Yumeko is a kitsune, or she's like half kitsune or something. And then Tatsumi is a... He's a kage for the Shadow Clan, which basically is a ninja. And he has this sword that has a demon in it. And he's like trained with the sword and like can access the demon's power sometimes... But if he shows emotion, he can get possessed by the demon in the sword, and that would be really, really bad. So they basically trained him to be emotionless to be able to carry the sword. Do you see, like, a theme? <laughs> and I love this trilogy because, spoilers, obviously he gets possessed at one point because you can't, you know, it's called Chekhov's gun, right? You can't have a gun and then have it not fire in the third act or whatever the heck. Someone will know what I'm talking about. But I loved it. So he... The second book is actually my favorite of the trilogy probably. Because in this book, he is like... Actually, I won't go super into it. But like there's just more demon stuff happening in the second book that I really, really liked. This book's probably... Actually, the first book's probably my least favorite. Because I really liked the ending of the trilogy as a whole. But I highly, highly recommend this trilogy. I feel like it's really underrated. And I haven't read any of Julie Kagawa's other stuff, but I know she had that really popular, like, a long time ago. She had a really popular vampire trilogy or something. She wrote those Iron Fae books or something. But I really need to read more of her books because this was just, like, incredible. If you like anime, this would be for you because it had heavy, heavy anime vibes. And I just wish that one day I'll get an anime like this because... It was, it was so good. I love Tatsumi and his demon problems. All right, I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm just going to kind of run through the other couple things. So I'm going to save the best for last. So first, I briefly wanted to mention Devil May Cry, which is a game series about Dante, who is this real fun dude on the, the cover here. There's a, these, this is the first three games. And Dante is... His mother was human and his father was a demon. So he's like half demon. And the story of this game is like, I don't want to say nothing special, but it's nothing like deep because most of the game is just like you play as Dante beating the shit out of people, which is fabulous. But in like the later games, the story gets ramped up a bit more and it's really fun. Like Dante's brother is Virgil, Dante and Virgil. And Virgil's, like, evil, and him and Dante fight all the time. And then there's another character named Nero. Dante, so Nero is in some of the later games. And I don't know. They're just so fun. I have played all of them except for the fourth one. But I've seen the story of the fourth one. So I kind of know, I know what happens. 
But if you, I'm trying to think of a, a game that's similar to this that's more popular than these are. I mean, these are pretty popular, but Capcom's more famous series is Resident Evil. So, I mean, I don't know. Uh, like, if you, like, I don't know, like, every level, I'll just explain the leveling. So, every level, you basically just fight demons with, like, a variety of weapons. So, I guess beat em up If you like beat em up games, that's basically what this is. Except, I usually don't like beat em up games, and I like this. So, I feel like it's more accessible to people who don't usually like these type of games because it's just so fun. Like, Dante's weapons and powers is just so fun. So this is a little different than the traditional like demon stuff I like, but I felt like I should mention it because I I don't mention I haven't mentioned games a lot on this channel and I love video games. So I'm mentioning one. So the last thing I wanted to talk about, and this is a spoiler. Uh so I'm gonna flash it right here for ninth house. So if you don't want to get spoiled for ninth house, please leave. I feel like it's not a spoiler to say demons are in this because it's pretty evident from the synopsis, but I'm about to spoil the wazoo out of Ninth House. So please leave if you don't want to get spoiled. But Ninth House is about this girl named Alex Stern. And she goes to Yale. And she basically, it's about magic and secret societies and demons and stuff like that. And that's all you need to know going in. I didn't know much else besides that. And honestly, like I started this book and the first 50 pages are like, I was not into it. Like, I was like, I don't get it. Like, everyone, like, I've heard mixed things about this book, and I was like, maybe I'm going to be on, like, the didn't like side of the mixed things. But then something happened. I don't know what it was, but suddenly I was incredibly invested, and this is my favorite book of 2020. I loved this book, and I will tell you. I mean, there was a lot of reasons, but I will tell you the main reason, and it is because at the end of the book, we find out. So... I'll back up a little bit. So Alex is the main character. There is a secondary character. He's the only other one we get occasional POV from, if I recall correctly. And that is Darlington, who is like, he's a little older than Alex. He's like her mentor. I believe Alex is like 20 and Darlington's like 22 or something. Like he's my age, I think. He's graduated. So I think he's like 22. And he's her mentor for this... Basically, they are protectors of secret societies. So he's trying to teach her to do all this stuff. And they kind of have some romantic tension and chemistry, but they don't really develop a romance in this book because this book, the series is going to be like six books. And I hope to Christ they get together because that would break my heart if they didn't. But regardless, we know at the very beginning of this book that Darlington is missing, that he's like disappeared somewhere. So half the book we see flashbacks where Alex is with Darlington and half the book we see Alex by herself when Darlington is missing. So we find out at the end of the book that Darlington's missing and that he has been turned into a demon. <laughs> and I literally have never been so excited in my life because the next book in the series is going to be Alex and co like all the other characters like going to like look for Darlington in hell or something and I am so excited you this will the sec the sequel to this will be my most anticipated book of whatever year it's coming out because I think I know Lee Bardugo has been focusing on like her King of Scars tr trilogy or series or whatever so I think this is, her series is on the back burner for the moment, but I'm like, I am going to kill for that book. Like, I am so excited. Anyway, um, that is it. Uh, that is the end of this video where I'm gushing about my love for demons. If you have any wrecks, or if you want to just discuss how weird I am in the comments below, I'd love to hear it. Hope you guys have a great night. Bye. Or wait. Goodbye. <laughs>